Good morning, afternoon and evening to all of you from wherever you are joining us today. Before we start today's session, please feel free to do event check in. This will give you access to additional resources and information about events that we are running on reactor, which are around similar topics to today's session. Also, you will be able to access links from today's session. I will share the event check in link with the event ID in the Q&A section shortly. Thank you all once again for joining us today. My name is Rashmita and I'm the event planner for Microsoft Reactor Bengaluru, India. This session will run over the next 60 minutes, including Q&A. The session is being recorded and will be uploaded to our Reactor YouTube channel. I will share the link to our YouTube channel in the chat section soon. Quick word on our code of conduct. We display this at all Microsoft Reactor events that we run and it's just a reminder to be aware of others. The key thing to take out here is to be respectful of other people's views, understanding of differences, being kind and considerate in the way you engage. The chat will be open throughout and we do encourage you all to participate. Also, please keep your mics muted during the session. I would now like to welcome Vivek Raja, our speaker for today's session, and our co-host Vivek Sridhar. Vivek Raja is an active cloud and AI researcher, mentor, speaker, blogger, and an open source contributor. He is currently working as data scientist at Nextum. Our co-host for today, Vivek Sridhar, is a tech enthusiast and an open source contributor with around 15 years of experience in the software industry. He works at Microsoft as a senior cloud advocate. But for now, I will hand over to both of you to begin the session. Over to you. Awesome, great. Uh, thanks for a wonderful okay. introduction here. And yep, it's Vivek and Vivek here for today's session. <laughs> yes, it's Vivek and Vivek. So uh, thanks Vivek for joining in for this Azure Happy Hour. And uh, and uh, to start with, right? So I just wanted to understand from you is what's the inspiration behind this talk? And, and I wanted to understand what exactly the problem statement uh, you're trying to solve in this specific uh, talk, because this is something which you were facing in your organization, right? So you wanted to solve this problem and um, you were looking for a solution for this and uh, you found a couple of things. So it would be great if you just start with the problem statement and let us know um, how this, uh, this whole thing fits into your solution. Okay. So, uh, so I have been working with Python since. Uh, to be in fact, I was working from my grade eleven of high school. So, I've been. I'm not. Uh, I'm very uh, old to Python. So the thing is, like, I'm always a guy who imports Python packages and uses it. And I never thought beyond like how these packages get published uh, in the first place. So, uh, as a machine learning engineer, so you import tons of Python libraries, get on with it, and work on that. So that was going on the other side and uh, right now I'm working as a data scientist and my responsibility is more inclined to cloud uh, than I would call myself as a data scientist. So I uh, kind of manage everything related to cloud in my organization. Uh, we, we as a startup are working on brain con control interfaces. I know that's a pretty cool stuff and it involves both hardware and software. So obviously we need to always have DevOps to make sure that everything is in the pipeline. So. There was, uh, we are actually working on an SDK that will help us all those BCI community members to uh, implement all those uh, brain control interface applications via their own. And that was the first step to look into the aspect of publishing a Python uh, package. And upon that, uh, to be in fact, like uh, for past two months, I'm really uh, shocked and astonished to see so much of things which are beyond the screen uh, before the Python gets published and used by the end users. It's like how we need to write the Python packages and what are the best practices which are involved in it and how developers contribute from various sources and it, it is streamlined and make sure that the package release is stable and so and so. So I learned a tons of things while uh, doing stuff and uh, one more thing, uh, as like we were learning to do implement those stuff, uh, obviously the documentation and blogs are the primary source of all the content and the necessary things we need to start with. And uh, I found a couple of interesting blogs, but the thing is like as we follow the tutorial, there are few situations where that does not apply or does not work. 
So that's where your developer uh, instincts kick in and you have to solve those problems and you overcome it. So those problems are usually due to like uh, there might be uh, upgrade in the versions or there might be a few deprecated versions and you have to find a solution which will run around that problems or you need to solve their own problem on your own. So I was also stuck at one point of situation where I was not able to proceed because uh, they were a mismatch in various versions and so on. So and somehow I solved it and today's session is about how I did it and I'll also help you to host your own Python packages and we'll be getting started with this. So that's the story behind the whole stuff which is going to be today's session. So, so to, to simplify, um, you have a Python package which is custom Python package and you want to uh, distribute between, I mean, distribute that package within your organization and not exactly to the outside organization, but inside of your organization. And how do we do that is, is, is what we are going to see today, right? Exactly, exactly. So uh, today's session will be like a mix of uh, not theories, but it will be like more into implementation part hands on. So you can just sit back and relax and see how things are done. But uh, a disclaimer is that I have already set up few pipelines and stuff to save the time for the particular session. But uh, worry not like the total implementation is also ready as a blog as well as my code samples. So once the session is over, those resources will be shared to you and you can sit back and go through those samples once it is done. So that's it. Uh, so anything from uh, from your strand, I think I can uh, share my yes, screen. Yes. Great, okay. Uh, great. So uh, today's session is about how to host your Python package in, in Azure DevOps. So I will actually consider everyone as a beginner here. So who I myself is a beginner. So if there are few situations where I can't answer things related to DevOps, because I'm also learning what, at the same rate of as you. So I guess uh, Vivek Sridhar really can jump in to help me at particular times as well. So uh, today's session is about what we are going to do is we are going to host some custom libraries and we are going to store them as private Actipacks and we'll be uh, also seeing how to use it and how this entire stuff is going to be built. And also before ending the session, we will also see how that can be open sourced in the future runs so that uh, that is available to everyone for the consumption. And a uh, little about myself is that I'm from the southern side of India. So I'm from the Tamil Nadu state. I'm currently working as a data scientist at Cortex BCI, which is a startup. I have graduated just last year from my uh, computer science and engineering from uh, 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 last year, October. And I love machine learning and uh, working with Python and AI and everything. So uh, I've been organizing several uh, communities in Azure developer community in India. So I handle a couple of cities in Tamil Nadu. And also uh, I'm a machine learning expert uh, and uh, AWS community builder pro uh, part of that program. And I have also written a couple of certifications in Microsoft. So I'm a Azure data scientist, AI engineer, data engineer, developer associate. And uh, besides that, I've also done cloud certification from other vendors as well. And all these stuff on the other way, like I love to do uh, hackathons. I've been part of both as a participant, as a mentor, as a technical judge. So I've been running with hackathons in nearly three to four years. And uh, from my college times, uh, uh, besides my uh, other work, I used to also publish uh, research papers and I've also filed the patent. So which is almost under uh, going to be published very soon. And this is my Twitter handle where I'll be actually posting about all my future uh, uh, sessions and also you can find details of my past sessions and tech related stuff and everything. So it has Vivek Raj or not not seven. So which I'm a fan of a James Bond. So I was a kid when I created this Twitter handle, uh, make sure that I have actually had that legal age, but still I went with not not seven. That's it. Uh, so today's session will be like we'll be uh, seeing from the basics, very basics of even writing a, a Python package. So we'll have a, how to uh, introduce. Uh, we'll I'll introduce you to DevOps. I'll also help you to set up DevOps environment, and uh, we'll also see how to set up a Python package local environment, and uh, we'll code a little bit in the Python, and then we'll get it deployed in DevOps. So that will be the entire pipeline for today. And uh, 
first let's start with so what is azure devops so uh, azure devops is a, a, a platform from microsoft uh, i just can you give me one second I, because i think there is a construction sound is going on so i'll just come back in one minute uh, sorry for the interruption uh, i'll just hang on uh, one those candidates uh, that attendees with few details while i come back Let's give uh, Vivek just two minutes, two to three minutes. Let him fix the problem. And Sir, which college you are graduated? So I graduated from MEPCO Schlenk Engineering College, uh, which is a, a German college which was established in uh, uh, Tamil Nadu. And uh, I did my uh, four years of BE Computer Science and Engineering there. Uh, so uh, I graduated last year around October and, uh, and this is my first job as a data scientist in the startup year. And uh, from Tamil Nadu, I have actually relocated to Delhi. So which is from I have shifted from south of India to north of India. And it's a pretty good experience to live in a different place and city as well. So I think uh, we can again get started. Sorry for the dispense which was there. Uh, I guess uh, can you see my screen? Yes. OK. So, yes, we can see. Great. Uh, so Azure DevOps is a platform where as all the developers can uh, leverage the services there to streamline their development processes and to maintain all the source codes uh, and artifacts and drive some CICD pipelines and so on. So, so that's a one stop place to do everything and it's a very pretty good platform and it also allows us to do more on the UI side itself so that all those uh, low code approach is also being carried out here. So what are the services we have in DevOps? So we have Azure Boats. So Azure Boats is same as what you have in uh, for agile tools like Jira and so on. So and Azure Pipelines is where you construct your CI CD pipelines for your automatic deployments and integrations as well. And Azure Repo is same like uh, your private Git repos. So it is a version control uh, which is exclusively private. And we can also write tests here using Azure test plans and Azure artifacts are where we store the important packages and so and so. And we'll be actually using pipelines and artifacts today to uh, create that Python package and store that as an artifact and see how it can be supplied to the uh, members in the organization. So first, uh, let's jump back to uh, I will show a quick on how to uh, establish, uh, create a DevOps boat. So when you go to Azure DevOps, so uh, my organization also uses uh, Azure DevOps for everything. So I have actually have my two private uh, packages. So one is Easy Azure ML. I'll be soon releasing this package, which will actually help you to uh, minimize the effort, which is there to write Azure ML code. So that will be very soonly released. So today's session, I have also created a separate uh, project where we, where I have done everything for today's work. So we can just go ahead and create a new project and we have all those boards, repos, pipelines, test plans and artifacts we here. So um, if someone is, uh, 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 please keep your mic, uh, mics muted. So we can also host, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, great. So first, First things first, go and create your project and now we have your project here. So and secondly, uh, uh, where should I actually? Um, okay, great. So second, uh, we need a Python code to uh, for a package to be developed, right? So what we're going to do is uh, go to your favorite IDE. So here what uh, we are going to create something called uh, uh, I have created a Python package called Animal Sounds. So I know that's not contribute to any developers, but this is uh, just uh, uh, for today's session. So uh, for whatever you do here, actually, uh, so make sure that uh, uh, we have created a virtual environment. So whatever we are going to do, we are going to create it as a virtual environment. So that's how we are going to uh, make sure that we don't mess with other local environments and packages here. So first thing we have set up there and secondly, uh, we can go ahead and create a, a new repository in GitHub. So either you can host your uh, repo in GitHub or we can 
host it in Azure repos as you wish. So I have actually chose uh, GitHub repo here. And you can also select the necessary licenses and readme file and git ignore file so make sure that it's also ready. So uh, I have also created uh, the repo here. So this is the repo. So make sure that I have pushed all the changes. So uh, uh, imagine like there is nothing here with except license and readme. So this is my uh, file. So again, uh, now, now that our GitHub is ready, go go to your uh, favorite IDE. Now we are going to do some coding stuff here. The first things, uh, we need to create a virtual environment. So uh, use your Python virtual environment. So I have created something called uh, uh, DevOps v, uh, VEMV. So which is actually, uh, I'll also activate it so that I can show you. So Vivek, can yep. you just uh, increase the font size? Yeah, OK. Yeah. Yeah, OK. So uh, you can just go ahead and create your uh, Python environment. So I have already created it. And I'm creating on that particular uh, this as well. I'm going to activate it using source dot what is a, a path to a particular uh, Python in a virtual environment. And then you can just clone your GitHub repo and uh, get started with that. So uh, things I've already done so that mostly I'll be actually showing you the comments, but I won't be running it mostly uh, because it's always done and dusted. Uh, but uh, make sure that I will show you everything which I gone here from time to time. So uh, we have all of have uh, the virtual environment and we have a cloned out GitHub repo. So GitHub repo by now only has license and readme files. And you can go ahead and pip install all the necessary files for this particular packages. So uh, we'll be actually using three things, which is PyTest, uh, Twain, and uh, Setup Tools. So that's the initial things we need and we need to require here. And later on, we will keep adding that to requirements.txt file, and we'll be keep updating it as we go on. So that's the first thing you have to set up to your uh, Python uh, local environment. And second, the structure of Python packages. So if you actually uh, worked on any open source project, uh, you might have no noticed that there is a particular format or a best practice which is followed in every single Python packages. So this is very necessary for us to uh, do that as well. So what I'm going to do is I am creating a package called animal sounds. So there are two animals, so which is cat and dog. All the functionalities are written in function.py and it is sure that you have to always have double underscore in it, double underscore dot pi in every single uh, sub packages you have. So uh, when we go now here, this is your uh, animal sounds is your package, uh, your top package and cat is a sub package and dog is a sub package and init dot pi and functions dot pi is your necessary files under each cat. So you can even start writing your functions or your code in uh, under double underscore init dot pi, but it's advisable to keep it in separate files to ensure that we have modularity always there. So if you want to really use the packages, we'll be actually using animal sounds dot dog dot function. So if I'm writing some functions here, uh, we'll be seeing how to connect those functions so that it can be used. So as you can see, this is the structure we have. We have animal sounds, we have cat and dog. Uh, don't worry about the test. We'll be talking about the test a little bit later. So in that init.py, uh, measure that dot functions, I'm importing all the functions to be used and same as here as well. And in the function, I'm writing a simple function called uh, make sound. So whenever I call animal sounds dot cat dot make sound, it's going to return me meow meow. And if it's dog, it's going to return me woof woof. It's just a simple uh, uh, function. So I just created it a couple of hours ago uh, to make sure that we have something to discuss about. And uh, this is where you can keep writing your Python, uh, add your Python files, keep writing it and make sure that you have imported necessary stuff here. Uh, for all the necessary files you add here. So if you're adding another file here, make sure that from dot that file name import start so that all the functions written in this functions.py or other files will be imported and easy to use. So that's the structure we have been discussing about. And uh, jumping back, so this is what uh, we had uh, in init.py, we wrote these functions here. And I said that. So imagine like you are done with your coding processes and it's like I'm OK, uh, this is all done. Uh, I need to make sure that to test this uh, functions so that uh, we'll be like uh, before deployment. Uh, we are very sure that uh, this functions are working very well and there is no uh, issues with this. 
So obviously every single developer must have a, a, a not only the coding aspect but also the testing. So it's each and every developer's responsibility to write unit tests. So in Python we have a PyTest which has uh, the unit test functionality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write uh, create a new folder called tests and in that I'm going to uh, again uh, create an empty uh, double underscore unit dot py and I'm going to write all the functions for the test. So uh, there is a, a for your py test to work uh, all your methods or your files must start with test underscore. So that's how your py test will recognize okay this is a unit test file which I need to run. So that's how it goes. So I have written something called test dog high and test cat high. So it will actually uh, import this uh, uh, package and uh, it will make the sound and I'm going to just check if the returned uh, package or uh, the thing is is, an, uh, is a string object. So obviously like as we have seen here, woof woof is actually a string object. So, uh, so make sure that we also getting that same here. So uh, this is how we are going to test our project. So uh, let me first activate the, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. So maybe, uh, maybe there is a, I mean, quick question. Yep. So if you're adding your test under the package, okay. So will, when you release the package, that even the test gets released with your package. Yes, exactly. The test gets released. So okay. before uh, doing something, uh, before we actually set up uh, our, our Python packages to be deployed in Azure DevOps. We need to make sure we are writing some script to em omit out those uh, related uh, files and unnecessary files, which does not need to go along with your production package. So, but the test will always remain in your repo, and everyone will get an access. Developers will get an access to it, not the end users after getting published. So, we will also see how to uh, make sure that we omit that test folder uh, while we are publishing that particular project. So let me also try and see if we can uh, run this test here. So the command, uh, so I actually I forgot commands and uh, very easily, so don't mind me. So we are using pytest and what's the path to that particular test folder. So uh, it's going on pytest hyphen m. I'm going to, uh, which is, uh, I'm in DevOps, so I'm going to just slash, uh, Okay, animal sounds. Uh, no, no, I'm going to need to navigate to Azure DevOps package. Then I need to go to animal sounds. Then I'm going to write to test. Oh, okay, so um, why there is no test running? So uh, let's see. Okay, the directory was not found. Uh, let me check the command if I write it properly. Yes, it is. So, okay. Uh, we have, uh, sorry, it's test, not test. So <laughs> that was a silly mistake. So we had two tests which is passed. So in point one one seconds, because we had two functions and that's how we made sure that this is passed and we are made sure that this package is ready to be deployed and there is no errors in the code. So we are done from the local environment side. So we are done uh, with that. So now we need to get our package to be deployed. So what are the things which we uh, additional to your source code files? What are the necessary things you need to have? So there is something called license. So since we have also already created a repo on GitHub and it asks whether you have to add a license so you can go with uh, open source MIT license. That's the thing we always go with. Or if you have your private organization has some sort of legal stuff. So make sure that you use that license.txt file. And README is where you write ex uh, exclusively on how to use a package and so on and so. That's a very good of way to document your uh, thing. So as I know, I just written that it's a, a Python sample Python package is going to be hosted in DevOps. Uh, it's a markdown file, so you can follow all the mark markdown tags to write it very beautifully. And then uh, there is something called manifest file. So what are the things which I need to include along with the package and so on and so stuff? So there are two things I either like, uh, should I include that uh, test folder to be omitted here or should I mention it somewhere else? So as of now, we are not going to omit the test folder here, but we are going to write it in somewhere other place. I will show you where we are going to write that. So I'm going to include that besides my source files, I need to uh, also include readme and license. 
So those are the things which needs to be along with my packages when the user uh, wants to download it. So that's one thing. And uh, another thing called setup.cfg. So setup.cfg is a config file and it is used by the packager to make sure that what are the things which are available there and uh, what are the things it needs to know for the installation of packages. So it's got a simple, uh, I'm sorry, I'm switching between uh, tabs here. Uh, so CFG here, it's like uh, what are the license metadata? We have only license files, it's got license and uh, we have a distribution wheel of universal equal to one. So every time you do something and you release the packages, you can go on increment that particular uh, uh, numbers. So it's up to the user's uh, developer's perspective. And another there is an important file called dot py uh, pic file. So uh, we are going to leave it empty now, but we are going to refill it uh, after uh, we are going, going to do something uh, with the package. So let, let's now just create some dot py pic file. And it's actually quite easy for you to create a file uh, in uh, Linux because you can just uh, click and you can easily add dot uh, py files. But uh, when it comes to Windows, if you are using a Windows as an environment, it is going to be, uh, you will be not able to create a file starting with dot. So there is a workaround. I will let you know how to do that in a little bit later. So as of now, let's assume like you have created dot p, uh, py pic files. So we are done. Uh, and as of now, except this file, everything is OS independent and there is nothing else for you to uh, switch around for Windows or Linux or Mac. So uh, since I'm using Mac, so everything will apply for the Linux as well. And uh, the next thing is requirement TXT file. Uh, so this is where you put all your necessary packages that needs to be going along with your package. So since we are just doing a print statement, we didn't have any other fancy libraries, but if you do have, uh, mention that in the requirements.txt file. And the next important file, what we are going to actually discuss is setup.py. This is where your entire package creation goes. So let's go and jump and see how that uh, file looks and uh, we will see how that works. So uh, setup.py, so this is where you are going to, uh, we need setup.tools uh, for that and uh, uh, this is where uh, you are going to uh, run this uh, readme file, you can read it and run. And this is a function where you have to uh, say about, describe about the package in a particular way. So let me zoom in so that for, for a better uh, reading. So it has got name. What is the name of your package? So, and also there is a, a pretty good uh, 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 conventional practice which is used uh, for the Python package in naming. It should be always one name, even animal sounds as a two syllable. So don't stick with two syllables or three syllables. Make sure that it's a single word so that it'll be easier to communicate. For example, TensorFlow or Azure ML or Azure.code. It's, it's like a single word which is easier to remember and work with. So for now, just go with animal sounds, versioning, and you can start with the increment numbers and versions. I'm using an MIT as my license. And what is the description of that particular uh, readme file? I'm just going to read it from the readme file and put it as my description. And what was the type of the long description? Uh, since it was a markdown, I'll just going to name it as a markdown. And this is the author, and this is the email. And what's the URL? So since we have the source repo, uh, just copy paste your GitHub source repo and add your keywords. So this is where your keywords is easy to search for your particular package and stuff. So since my package deals with Azure and DevOps and Python, I'm going, just going to give that as well. And these are the classifiers. Like what are the programming language it, it should have? And is it that, again, the license? And uh, what was the topic? Topic is about software development and building tools and the internet audiences developers because that's where we have. And the development status. So we have three as an alpha, four as a beta release, and five as a production stable release. So just go with an alpha release. That's uh, not going to matter. And one more thing. Uh, as of now, I haven't included uh, something which we discussed earlier, how to omit uh, files from uh, from while uh, sourcing your package. So this is where you're going to use something called find packages. So find packages dot exclude and give us a list of all those particular uh, 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 list of uh, folders that needs to be omitted in your source repository. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, source uh, rep repository. So I didn't, I didn't include here for a few reasons. I'll let you know why in the few, uh, things, but it's always better to include that uh, while you're going for a production release and even for an alpha release where you find that. 
So, so that, that that's where that is where I can omit the test package. I mean, test exactly. Folder, right? Okay. So I can uh, show you that uh, this as well. So uh, find packages and dot exclude uh, is where you actually exclude the particular file. Uh, so this is where we are actually doing that. So so find packages dot exclude and these are the test files which I need to exclude. And while uh, your test packages will be excluded from your official source files. So uh, this is what we have to do and uh, let's again switch back. So it's like we have made everything ready for uh, Python package. So as of now we haven't stepped back into the DevOps, but we are made sure that the whole development process is completed and we are going ahead for a release here. So uh, everything is done. We have wrote, wrote all the necessary scripts and now it's our time to uh, do the release. So if everything is done properly this will be your actual python package structure so which is like you have your source uh, your base folder and this is where you have your uh, original top package these are the sub packages these are the tests which needs to be omitted and uh, git ignore and this is an empty file we will fill it a little bit later we have license manifest file where we showed what to include and what not to a readme file to explain about our package requirements.txt file to all to install all the necessary requirements. We have seen two setup.cfc files and setup.py in detail about uh, how to include the packages, make sure that what release we are going to do and everything. So now that we have all set up, it's now to do uh, the real uh, deployment part. Uh, let me go back again. So now we are going to uh, go back to the DevOps pipeline and we are going to create all the stuff there. So first we need to go and create a new feed in the artifacts. So let's go back here. I will just explain like uh, we have repos, pipelines, test plans and artifacts. So artifact is the final place where we'll be actually getting our Python package. So since I have already done the deployment, my pack package is ready and to be used here. So uh, but before that you have nothing here and what you have to do is you have to go ahead and Uh, there is some disturbance uh, from somewhere. Else. Okay, great. So what you have to do is uh, ignore that there is packages which are installed. For now, you have something called empty. Uh, go ahead and type your new feed. It just give a random new name, but make sure that you remember this name because you are going to use it in the following steps as well. So and also you can restrict the visibility to uh, of this particular feed so that the release pipeline may not be tampered by other developers or maybe like interns if you have in your organization and something like that. So as of now, just go with the defaults uh, and you can just go ahead and create your file. So once what you do here is that uh, we have your feed created. So this is where whatever you're going to publish at the end of the release pipeline, you're going to have it here in the artifact. Now, now we are going to do our, our pipeline. So a pipeline is where we are going to get uh, uh, the source files, compile it and store it as an, as an act, artifact. Like this is a place before the release is going to be. It's like I'm going to bring the artifact from the actual source of my uh, repository to DevOps here. So first what we are going to do is we are going to again go to pipelines. There are several pipelines where we can write here. So it's about uh, a normal pipeline and about release pipelines and so on. So we are going to be writing two pipelines here. So one is the normal pipeline to get and uh, deploy the artifact. I mean like to store the artifact in the first place. So let's go ahead and create a pipeline. So I've already run a couple of times. So uh, I will show you what needs to be done. So click new pipeline. And where is your code? So as of now, I have hosted in GitHub. So if you have an Azure repos Git, you can just select that and wherever your particular uh, repo is there. And then uh, my uh, GitHub is already linked to this DevOps, so I, I'll be able to directly get my uh, libraries and the repositories, which is written here. So I have around 80 plus libraries, uh, repositories in GitHub. So I'm going to select the one which I'm going to deploy. So Azure DevOps pipeline. And here, uh, since we already have, uh, I have already deployed it, there is an additional uh, packages called uh, 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 for, for 
for deployment so if you can actually see we have some animal sounds and all the necessary deployment related stuff so it our uh, pipeline has already identified that this uh, i'm sorry this is this has been already uh, deployed so it it has recognized that it's the python package but if you actually start with no deployments you won't be actually able to find these first two options you'll be only able to find a starter pipeline or you'll be able to use an existing yaml file so as of now let's go ahead and create a starter pipeline and we have something like this so for those who have not worked in yml file uh, i would not scare you off but uh, let's discuss on few things which needs to be part of this yml file which is necessary uh, though you are very new to you uh, i am also not much familiar in writing yml files but i can explain you what was written there so we it is already these are the details which are given already uh, given by azure devops itself and uh, the scripts first we need to install the dependencies and if you actually need to uh, run your test in the azure devops itself we can use this as well so this will actually run your test and you'll be able to do that and uh, only if the test have passed then it will go to the next part of the script which is like artifact creation so in the artifact creation it is like the setup.py so uh, we already know there is there was a setup.py which was in the source folder so we are going to run it and that will create as the artifact here so once the artifact is created i'm going to copy that artifact and put it in my uh artifacts folder so that's it so uh which is like the pipelines end artifact what we are going to use so the, that's where we are going to use it and that's how the artifact gets published at the end of the uh, pipeline so these are the easy ones which we can do uh for for your if you are writing this for the first time just go ahead and just copy paste the entire pipeline uh, yml file and you're good to go uh, everything is like dynamically fetched so you don't have to change anything here so so that now we have created a pipeline and it's you're good to go. So, so uh, just yep. one question there. Um, so for the community, right? Um, okay. If you open that YML. Okay. Uh, one um, yes. Yeah. You know, to do this uh, package building, you need infrastructure. So the pool is where the infrastructure is, right? It is hmm. directly provided by the Azure DevOps for you. Yes. Okay. And and also like you can also mention that in what type of branch you have to take the source files and do the deployment. So as I now go with master and now it's actually got renamed to main. So but it will work for both master and main. So that's where we are going to trigger it. And whatever commit you are making changes in the uh, uh, main branch, this pipelines will all already will get automatically triggered so that you don't have to actually do the releases every single time. And these pipelines can be automated on the first place itself. So these are the other necessary steps, uh, script files which are going through and it's uh, simple ones. So now that assume like, well, let's assume this uh, pipeline is done and we're going to execute it. I tried executing it twice and it got failed. And uh, let's see the reason why it got failed. There was some error in artifact uh, creation and so on. So while this, I was running this particular test file. Do you remember this line when I told how to exclude a particular test? So for time being, I have just removed that code from particular uh, that uh, uh, .py file. Uh, but if you, what was the actual error I figured out very recently is that you don't have to use the same uh, variable here because we have already used the same variable. Uh, I, let me show you that. So since I already used the variable packages, that was the reason uh, why it, it threw, threw an error in the first place. So if you just use another uh, packages, so this will get automatically excluded and we are good to go. So uh, let's take to the fur and the uh, stable uh, and the successful pipeline run. So what really happened in the pipeline is that, so these are the steps which we've done there. So first it will initialize the job and we are going to uh, main uh, the trigger was mentioned as main so we have the main here and we are going to use python 3.6 because that was the infrastructure we requested for and uh, de uh, dependencies like install all the dependencies and it will get all the necessary pytest and so on so to be deployed and next comes the artifact creation and uh, it takes all the necessary artifact creation and does it this is where your setup.py file comes into the picture and does all the necessary for you and then it copies a file and publishes the build artifact 
and the artifact can be found as uh, uh, let me show the artifact uh, so I guess I have the picture over here as well uh, so these were done and uh, next one is final artifact so we were able to get the artifact as what was that particular uh, pipeline name that's the artifact name as well so now we are going to actually build on setting up a release pipeline so let's go on to that actually so one pipeline is done and we have the ready artifact and now we are going to release it so from the release pipeline just go ahead and create a release pipeline and uh, what is the artifact needs to be done and so on so uh, but let's say like i have to create i'm sorry i created new release but let me show you how to create a new release pipeline itself so a release pipeline looks like this you have something to start with that is an artifact or something that will be taken throughout the release pipelines and finally gets deployed on the necessary stuff so let me stop with an empty job so that I can show you how you can configure your release pipelines. First, let me select the artifact. So the release artifact is from our release pipeline. So I'm going to select that from the pipeline itself. So which was vivek.devops underscore package. And this was the particular package uh, build artifact which you are going to deploy. So it can be like since if you, ha if you have your artifacts deployed in some other place, uh, you can also choose it as repos or if you're already or artifact is in the Azure repo, just choose it and it will be able to do that same. Or it can be the GitHub releases or it can be Azure containers or Jenkins and whatsoever. So it has all the necessary connectivity. All you have to do is just click where your actual artifact is and you can just go on with that. So I'm going to add this one. So once that is added, we have something called a stage. So you can have n number of stages and stages can have child runs and child uh, n number of jobs associated with that. So as of now, I'm going to configure this one. So I'm going to mention this as a published stage. So let's make it very simple a release pipeline. So I'm going to use it as a published stage. And this published stage will have three tasks. So on uh, these are the three tasks which will actually command uh, on the release pipelines. So let's see what are the three commands we are going to use here. And this is the simplest way to get started with. So uh, let me show you about the three uh, tasks here. So as of now, um, before I even created that, we had no release pipeline. So just go ahead and create a new release pipeline and uh, select your build uh, pipeline as your artifact. And we have two things here. The first one is Twine Authenticate. A Twine or your PYPI file uh, is where you actually Python publisher or you can use Twine to actually publish it. So we are just going, going to use Twine as our uh, Authenticate. Uh, all you have to do is uh, just go and uh, add a job and the job is to find the twine so i'm going to search here so twine upload authenticate or you can use your uh, pypi publisher so as how you want to publish it so python always supports two things either you can uh, put it as twine as a release wheels or you can use pip installs by releasing it in a pi publisher so i'm going to add this one and uh, nothing needs to be done. Uh, I, I'm sorry, like we need to select that particular feed. So remember the uh, feed name which we had created at the first stage of our uh, DevOps pipeline. Just go ahead and create it, uh, select this one. So this is where your end artifact or your release package will be just deployed here. So that's first thing. And second thing is I'm going to write two commands here. So one is, uh, so for writing commands, there is called command line. So this is where your script files will be executed. So if you want to write any script files, you can just go ahead and write it. You can rename it as you want. So I can uh, rename, rename it as this is where I'm going to uh, install uh, Twine. So Twine installation. Let me check if that is the correct one. Yep, I'm going to install Twine here. So uh, I'm going to Twine installation and pip install Twine. So this script will be executed after this one. And the third one is publishing it. So for publishing it, uh, we have uh, called publish artifact. And uh, to me, in fact, the first time when I tried to deploy my easy Azure ML uh, package, I found it really a little bit difficult to find how to publish it on the script wise. So this one, we are automating it, but rather I will also show you how to do it in the UI or by the code method as well. And uh, let me explain what really happens here. So Twine, we are going to upload that artifact feed and it's going to take the PYPIC path 
and uh, this is the distribution uh, of that particular package so azure devops python package remember that fee uh, the artifact name so uh, once you actually run the setup.file it creates a dist uh, folders there and that is going to take up and do the artifact publishment so this is what this line is going to do and later on i will also show you how to connect feed and do your publishing just from your terminal as well so as of now let's stick with this one uh, i'm not going to do it in uh, here uh, let's just assume like this was done and we are going to run the pipeline so what really happens is that when you go to here and i have already set up all sorry this is releases so you can also check in like this was the, uh, this was the thing which i was done so all the three facts just run the pipeline and at the end of this uh, release pipeline if it get succeeded uh, it will eventually get succeeded that's what we have done here so we have something at the end of the artifact called animal sounds so as version 1.0.0 so what is a this feed it means like this is a feed where this needs to be published and this is how we got the animal sounds as a package so the reason why it shows downloads as four is that i have gone inside and downloaded it a couple of times to see if this really downloads or not so that was really happened there and uh, let's jump back and see here so what really happens is that when you run the pipeline it will show you in progress and uh, it will get succeeded eventually and at the result you will be actually able to fee see that animal sounds in your artifact feed so before that there is a zero downloads and zero users of that uh, because i have an allocated particular this package to be used so as of now what really happens here so uh, we have stored it as an private artifact and now comes an important question so if it is really private uh, how do we have to uh, activate or download this particular package so now comes the other stuff where you need to create a personal token so this is what i have figured out very recently actually so uh, earlier it was like the password approach where you have to just type in your password and you will get an access but it was ruled out uh, on august 13 which is was just two weeks back so now that we don't have passwords to be written uh, or to be typed to get the packages but we need to use the personal access tokens so this is kind of private one and just go ahead and create an access token it's not a pretty uh, uh, uh big stuff you can just go ahead and figure it out by yourself so since it has supply of my secrets as well so i don't want to go through with that as of now and next thing is connect to a feed so now this is actually we have uh uh done this one we can connect to a feed so that instead of doing that every single time i can just put it in some pip or twine and just install it as we go by so these are the instructions which is given by the this one you have to create dot pip dot com file in your virtual environment and you will be able to retrieve it oh sorry uh, so uh, pip dot com file just put your uh, this one and once that is done uh, you can install it and use so uh, since there was some issues with my personal token and i was not sure like why i was able to download it but still i can show you that so instead if you find it little bit hectic you can just go ahead and download this file and your file is ready to be accessed as well so that's it so you can just use a uh, wget to also retrieve it by yourself and once you actually do that you will have something like this so this is my animal sounds and it has got my cat and dog and test because i have not excluded that but if i written that in the uh, setup dot by which will sh should have been uh, excluded in the first place so then you are actually free to use your uh, packages and just need to import it and use as you go by so, so that's one uh, question there yep so if you go back uh, how yep. do i change the versions so whenever i am pushing uh, pushing the packages how do okay. i update the version numbers Okay, and versioning comes into picture uh, is where your setup dot file uh, comes into comes here. So all you have to do is uh, just increment your versioning, and you can just deploy it as it goes by. Or else there's an also a better way to do this one, as what I uh, we follow in all package releases. So your package should not your final and your last release must be your main folder, and every other release should be like if if uh, my release is 1.0.0. always create a branch called 1.0.0 where you, all developers will be commit to it and that will be published so when you are doing the next release you have to just 
clone that branch, make it as 0 0.1, and that will be a new branch, and you have to release that particular branch for your next release. So when you find that this package is no more developments required, then only then it gets published from the main. So that's how your publishments should really go like. And uh, uh, this is what I recently found out because when we were writing the SDK, we uh, have several uh, versions to be coming up. So our first version was uh, as one of the branch name and we released that particular branch and it's working fine. So, and, uh, and our team is working on the second release uh, very soon. So that we have now checked out a, a second branch and that second branch has uh, this one. So uh, I can just show you that, but uh, I won't go into that particular detail. So, so when it comes to repos, we have two branches. So this is a release pipeline. So this is how it goes. And you have to create for different pipelines and releases. And uh, uh, that's how you maintain the versioning inside a particular Python project. So uh, now that now this package is now an artifact and that's custom. You have to use your personal token to retrieve it and download and install it. Uh, but the question is like, how should I simply install as pip install animal sounds like that? So that means you have to open source your project and open sourcing it, which means you have to connect your feed to pipe and uh, PYPI or you can make it as a GitHub release if it's more convenient. and. Uh, I will also write a little bit on the, how to open source your packages and few other uh, 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 things you have to take care of. But I guess like the most of the stuff what you have discussed here as of now is it's going to be the, exactly the same unless the release pipelines end deployment may not be the artifact as your feed, but it might be your GitHub as your end uh, uh, release pipeline. So that's how you're just going to open source it. So there's not going to be much difference in the pipelines. So I'll also write a little bit on open sourcing the packages. The blog is underway right now and uh, it'll be soon released as well. So uh, I was actually, I was intending to release a blog along with today's session, but I have to, I was thinking, okay, let me find some time to actually uh, add some more stuff on open sourcing the package so that you can use it on for your further development as well. So that's all of, of today's session. And uh, I guess uh, if you have any questions, I, I'll be happy to take them now. Yes, there were a couple of questions. Um, so from there was one question from Meeda Sharma that I have only worked on projects, so I have only created one single Python file, mm -hmm. either in .py or in .ipy, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, never used several files like this for deployments and understanding what should be the file. So, so understanding is what files should be keep, what files oh. we should not keep. Uh, specifically from .py and dot uh, IPN. Okay, uh, so that's uh, when it comes to this question. Uh, I can just show you the uh, necessary uh, the final Python structure. So uh, before even writing my first Python uh, package, I never knew about. Uh, creating a license or uh, creating a manifest file on py files so you can when you're doing your de uh, development just go ahead and work on your source file so as uh, writing a source file just uh, make sure that you have init and double underscore dot init files in every single package you write and also in the sub packages and inside the sub packages uh, just import the necessary functions and uh, whatever files you write here as what i have mentioned here so in all the uh, init files of your sub packages, make sure that uh, the file name dot import is there and you can go ahead and create as many Python files inside and write your functions in that. So that's first thing and that's the necessary for your uh, uh, source files. And when it comes to deployment files, uh, these are the files which is necessary. I have also ran, done a detailing on uh, about these files and how you have to create it and so on so in my blog. Uh, but sure, I can just give a skim overview of that. It's like license for your open sourcing license files, README to explain your project, manifest files to include and exclude your files here. And uh, uh, these are the uh, setup uh, CFG files and PY, uh, PYPRC file. But I can also recommend you one uh, thing. Uh, I guess it's in my uh, presentation as well, I guess. Where you can find, okay. So how you can actually make some uh, interesting uh, uh, 
uh, on structuring your Python requirements file and setup dot file. So there is official documentation which is uh, uh, which is written. So it's like setup dot py Python package. If you Google it, you'll get that. And uh, this is a, a source URL, and you'll be able to get that as well. So uh, with that, you'll be actually able to uh, make sure that uh, you know everything which needs to be done for uh, establishing your uh, uh, so open sourcing your Python package. I guess that has answered your question. Great. And uh, the uh, resource, I guess you are muted. Yeah, there were a couple of questions uh, before which I have shared uh, a couple of answers there. Um, any more questions? So there is a question on, there are two questions actually. There were one question on, can you share the repo link? Yep. And mm -hmm. there were one more uh, where, you know, you blog, upcoming blog. Yep. Coming blog, okay. So they want to understand that. So uh, I have a very good GitHub repo. Uh, so it's like everything related to my all my talks and everything is maintained here. So uh, if you go to my GitHub repo, uh, you can find every single detail. So when it comes to meetups, which is our, which is our, what we have here. So all my meetups will, uh, will be listed down every single updated every single month. And today's session is also will be updated. I'll soon update this GitHub repo where you can access all the deck of this presentation and my actual uh, repo where we had open sourced our project and uh, this was the open source project as well so you can uh, find this as azure devops py package so that you can go through the setup dot py files and you can fork it and use it as for your requirement so and one more thing when it comes to blog i write my blogs in dev.2 so uh, you can find amazing series of blogs and as well as uh, here. So I have done uh, 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 on machine learning and so and so. I can check out my earlier blogs and this blog will also get uh, uh, released very soon. So I guess you can get all the necessary resources from my GitHub itself. So Vivek0712 is the place where you have to go. Great. And uh, any more question? Oh, sorry, I didn't share my screen actually. Uh, I didn't notice that. Okay, uh, this was the thing. So uh, this is the dev.2 uh, file profile where I write all my blogs and everything. I have also written, uh, I'm writing a series on machine learning, Azure machine learning as well. And for today's session, uh, it's everything is in my GitHub repo. Just go there and in my main profile itself, you can find all the necessary details. Vivek, can and, you just copy that repo and post it in the chat? Yep, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so this is where you can find all the necessary details of my entire uh, works. So, but when it comes to meetups in particular, uh, you can go ahead and look into my uh, calendar so to can you can find me uh, doing so other sessions and the future sessions. So you can just RSVP and get on with that. So I also have a tomorrow uh, one session on Azure Cognitive Services. If you'd like to join in, uh, check out this particular uh, meetup as well. Uh, you can have it. So, and I guess uh, that's where you can find everything about uh, all the code samples and everything. So they should be able to do that. Yes. Uh, and uh, awesome. Uh, is there other questions? When is your blog coming up? Uh, so the blog will be actually released either today night or tomorrow. Uh, since I have a couple of uh, tomorrow session as well, I guess I will take this weekend uh, to literally complete my uh, uh, blog, but it's almost done. I will also write a lot about on open sourcing so that what missed today can be also covered on the blog uh, as well. So uh, that's where uh, we can go ahead. And uh, any yeah. more questions, uh, please do submit questions in the chat or I think you can also unmute I believe and ask questions if you have so, while we are waiting for some questions you know you can also you know provide us the survey and also check in uh, do the event check in so that you get the resources for this session and yes of this is great. Great session, Vivek. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thanks. That was actually uh, uh, 
it was very good to do as well because it aligns with my work and i was able to uh, help for developers who were stuck in few points in implementing the same stuff i guess so uh, by this session you'll be having a simplified straightforward way to do it very quickly uh, uh, that would be the takeaway from today's session cool thank you thank you vivek for joining in and rashmita back to you thank you vivek raja and thank you vivek shridhar for the session and thank you all for joining us today please uh, feel free to do event check in and share your feedback with us it will help us to choose our topic that better suit our audiences also please do visit our microsoft reactor bengaluru meetup page for more upcoming sessions thank you all once again and enjoy the rest of your day thank you and signing off from vivek and vivek <laughs> see you bye bye have a nice weekend bye bye yeah.